Here is something we all have in common. We reside in the third dimension, but in the blink of an eye and with a flicker of light, perception can shift. Our senses realign and doorways may open. Since the dawn of time, mysteries of a paranormal nature have baffled all global cultures. The Hudson Valley is no exception, and its residents are about to discover that they are forever etched in the pages of the Pine Bush Chronicles. In the 1700s, these sailors were going up and down the Hudson River from New York City to what was then a very small Albany. And at night, they would see these unusual lights on the side, of both sides of the river, and they were very afraid of it. Now, a lot of the sailors were kept in line because if they screwed up, the threat was they were going to throw them over to land and they'd have to deal with these lights at night. You know, if you look at the whole story of Rip Van Winkle, you could argue that it's a, a perfect example of, a, of a, an abduction that occurred in the 1700s. The little people come and he falls asleep, and when he wakes up, it's decades later, and most of his family's grown up and some of them died, and it didn't just happen hundreds of years ago. It's still happening today. On the first Wednesday of each month, a support group called the United Friends Observer Society convenes here at the Walker Valley Schoolhouse, just east of the tiny hamlet of Pine Bush, New York. For those of you unfamiliar with anagrams, that stands for UFOs. Recording devices are prohibited. We got to speak to a few members after the meeting. I think there's a field or whatever down the cemetery, down the way. That's pretty much where the hot spot is. We were at the cemetery in Route 52, and off in the distance to the far back were what we assumed to be headlights or a car or an ATV. There was I guess this one cadet he said he saw one outside of his porch. I was behind my parents' house a mile up the road here in Walker Valley. And it was approaching us kind of quickly. And then it dawned on me, that's farmland out there. There's no bumps. Right up the street from that, which is uh, near a swamp there, and there's a lot of things that are seen there. There's a, like an electronic impulse every so often. And I look forward and I see about 10 feet in front of me this entity, black figure, translucent. At first you thought it was some guy on the, you know, a stranger on the property, you know, like playing hide and seek type of thing. Like he would, he would walk up to a tree and like stand against the tree, like, you know, like, his, like, you know, be one with the tree type of thing, like hiding behind it. And then it would walk to another tree and do the same thing and then walk to another tree. These lights were steady and approaching fast. And when it got to the headstones, it cleared the headstones. I'm like thinking to myself, you know, this isn't really happening, is it? I get the sense that it was like looking at me. It, it was like a full grown man, you know, size. Listen, I could see the leaves of the trees behind it. You couldn't make out anything other than that it was black and that you could see through it. And as they approached very quickly and for anything to come the distance across that field that it did, it was not, it was not on the ground. I've heard people report that they've seen a large creature that could jump 10 feet at a time as if it was on a trampoline. I mean, I was scared. And like I said, when it started to turn around, I was like in shock. The thought that came through my head at that point was, this is my last chance to see it. You know, like as it was walking away and it started to walk down the embankment, it seemed like it was going down to the ground. Right here at Cragsmore Mountain, there's people that live on the mountain that here in the mountain, as if there's tunnels there and sirens in the tunnels, and these are not echoes off the mountain, but they're within the mountain. And there was a star on that side of the valley, and there was a star on this side of the valley, and the star on this side of the valley came over and touched this one for a few moments and then went on its way. Am I gonna say that it was an alien? Was it a you know, spirit or a ghost or, you know, to narrow it down and be, you know, be narrow-minded and say, oh, it's definitely, you know, a Bigfoot from outer space. All these different possibilities exist. Six months to a year, several of the people had experiences as well. It was uncomfortable that it possibly could have been evil, but we didn't hang around. I didn't want nothing to do at that point. Yeah, I've not seen one yet, but I do believe that it's, it's real, yes. There's a pattern to what I've seen, what we've seen here. Cause some fear at first, and then you get to a point where you say, wow, there's an order to this. So, so it's kind of, it goes from fear to exciting, to interesting, to I want to know more. If I, if I were to actually see one, I, I might chase it, maybe. 
to, to a point, then I'd turn around and be like, no, no more. <laughs> Some say that junctures between dimensions are freaks of nature that happen, but who knows how often and to whom? Perhaps these questions and others will be answered as we turn each page of the Pine Bush Chronicles. It's a big deal here and it's, it's pretty neat, you know, how it revolves around it and stuff. This is common. People around this are reporting these things frequently. Things are happening and we don't know what they are.